time? I think it's 26, right? Yeah. All right. I can't have reviews and discussions and all that. I have to take it easy. I don't know if you already heard I had a minor heart attack. So I have to take it easy. So I do apologize for not having <laughs> review sessions and extra Saturday reviews. So I apologize. So. so thank you so much. This time, no. This time, okay. <laughs> but <coughs> I do have a old review from previous years. It's, I think, one or two years old. It's two hours for exam two, which I will post. Okay. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's a video. <coughs> sure. Yeah. All right. So seven, we finished seven. Let's just quickly. So where did we stop? Seven. Chlorhexidine. All right. This one right here? Here? Wow. <clears throat> okay. All right. <clears throat> Chapter seven. Okay. Specific chemicals we are talking about that are commonly used <coughs> to control microbial growth. The first chemical that was used by Joseph Lister was phenol. Okay, done with phenol. Second chemical that is most frequently used if you donate blood, or if you go to doctor's office, they use hibiscin. Okay, most people are not allergic to this chemical right here as compared to tincture of iodine or iodine or other chemicals. Dentists also use this extensively for before oral surgery. So this chlorhexidine is commonly used to disinfect skin and mucous membrane. It's non-toxic, non-irritant, non-absorbable. Okay. It's non-sporocidal, kills microorganism, but it is non-sterilent, does not accomplish sterilization. We're going to move a little faster on this one because these are just <coughs> straightforward stuff here. Alcohols, Com another common chemical. <clears throat> Again, microbicidal, not sporocidal. Does not accomplish sterilization, non sterilant. Best when it is used, 50% water uh, or 70% alcohol, 30% water. Mixture of water and alcohol, aqua solution. Or you can combine it with a halogen. Halogen such as iodine. One of the best antiseptics available over the counter is tincture of iodine. Tincture of iodine, that brown amber bottle, alcohol mixture of the one that we use in our lab today. Okay. <clears throat> Motifaction. If you remember gram stain, what does it do? Precipitate protein, then solubilize lipids. Halogens, a group of chemicals, iodine, chlorine, and fluorine, will concentrate on the first two. Iodine, <clears throat> if you take iodine crystals, put it in water. They do not dissolve. Pure iodine does not dissolve in water. Okay, that's why the best available form of iodine is alcohol and iodine, called tincture of iodine, which is right here. Tincture of iodine, 70% alcohol and iodine. What is one of the biggest disadvantage of iodine? There are three main 
One is allergy. Number two, stains, stains, sewer skin. Number three, it, because of alcohol, it loses its effectiveness very fast. Because of alcohol, it evaporates. So to replace a tincture of iodine, the new modified versions of iodines are, these are called iodophores. They lack alcohol, iodophores. For example, provodyne, betadine, isodyne. They have no alcohol, you apply them on your skin, okay, and you have, you'll have long-lasting effect. And many people are not allergic to isodyne and provodyne. Betadine, still some people are. Some people are allergic to betadine. Mode of action. No one knows how it works. This is proposed, mo proposed mode of action. Proposed. This, this is how m it may work. <clears throat> okay. The, the, uh, the main term in this whole paragraph is halogenation. The, the three words, halogenation of tyrosine. That is the mode of action, and let me explain what that is. Halogenation of tyrosine. Okay. <clears throat> Scientists believe that okay, there are, how many amino acids exist in nature? 20. One of the 20 amino acids is tyrosine, T, T. T. Cells, they use tyrosine to build new proteins, new enzymes, right? Okay. When you applied iodine to your skin, iodine literally binds with tyrosine. This combining of iodine or any other halogen to another molecule is called halogenation. halogenation. So if iodine is attached to tyrosine, cell is unable to pick up this tyrosine and use it. That's it. That is the proposed mode of action. Halogenation of tyrosine. <coughs> Next um, chemical that is extensively used, we actually don't have choice, we have to use it. Not always a good idea. Chlorine and chlorine gas. Okay. Why is it not a good idea? Because when chlorine breaks down in makes a chemical, which is, pardon me, I'll come back to the first two, this chemical right here, chlorine and chlorine gas. When it breaks down in water, in your swimming pool, in your water supply, it makes this chemical called trihalomethane. And what does it do in lab animals? Cleanser causing agent. When you get your water report at the end of the year from your city, pay attention to this content, always. Every city sends you a report, and they have the contents of trihalomethane. Okay. Even in minute quantities, if you live in a city, 20, 30, 40 years, even minute quantities, they add up. And then we wonder why there is so much cancer. Okay. This is just one chemical. It's one chemical. Use filter at home. Use filter, and most charcoal filters they will remove chlorine and chlorine derivatives. Okay. Bottled water, not necessarily. I don't. I don't agree with that. <clears throat> okay. Hypochlorites. The guy who cleans your swimming pool is commonly used to clean dairy spa swimming pool stuff like that. One of the derivatives of chlorine, which is called chloramine, these are expensive. And the biggest advantage of this chloramine, they do not make trihalomethane. Why don't we? They don't. They do not, they do not produce trihalomethane. If you want to clean your water, use chloramine. If you are a millionaire billionaire, you can use this. But millionaire billionaires, they don't use chlorine gas to clean their water. They use what? Ozone ozone to clean their water, okay, or simple filters. Ozone, when it breaks down in water, it produces what? Oxygen as byproduct, oxygen. Okay. It's a strong oxidizing agent. This is how chlorine works in water. This is how it kills bacteria in water. Okay, mode of action, important from exam point of view. When you add chlorine to water, it immediately makes 
hydrochloric acid, which is intermediate compound. Chlorine plus water makes hydrochloric acid. But the antimicrobial activity is not because of this antimicrobial activity. This hydrochloric acid immediately breaks down into hypochlorous acid and nascent oxygen. One more time. Chlorine plus water makes hydrochloric acid, which is intermediate compound. It is broken down immediately into hypochlorous acid, HClO, and O, nascent oxygen, O with a negative sign on it, negative. Both of them are unstable. And they are strong oxidizing agent. What is an oxidizing agent? So what is the trihalomethane? Trihalomethane is one of the byproducts when these are extremely further broken down. Oh, yeah. We are further with the hypochlorous acid and then they are excreted okay, from the body. That's when we make trihalomethane. Further, further uh, breakdown of this, I don't know the chemistry of that, honestly. Where do trihalomethanes come from? Probably more digestion of this or this right here. Okay. <clears throat> Aldehydes are new. They are not in your notes, so you please. Aldehydes. Glutaraldehyde, okay, formaldehyde, okay. They are commonly used for disinfection. They are also not sterilant. Okay. Mode of action, they inactivate certain proteins. Commonly used to clean up medical supplies. So far, all the names that I have given you start phenol all the way to aldehydes. Which of these chemical is sterilant? None. None. None of them is sterile. They are all disinfectants or antiseptics, but none of them they come. Finish. This is the one that is sterilent, this gas, ethylene oxide gas, is the only chemical name that you need to remember that is sterilent, it comes with sterilization. Two problems with this, very explosive and with carcinogenic. So you need to dilute it before you use it. Anything that's made of plastic, when they do an open heart surgery, <clears throat> they hook you up to heart lung machine. And heart lung machine, as you have seen it, it has lots of parts that are plastic tubing coming out. So in between patients, how do they clean it? Ethylene oxide gas. How do they clean or sterilize the valves that they put in the body or the joints, metal joints and all that? There are plastic parts too sometimes. Ethylene oxide gas. They can put them in the autoclave, right? So <clears throat> I think I may have asked you this question last time. Okay, here's your container. Plastic container. It has a glass jar in it. Glass jar. And this glass jar contains some heat labile broth. This setup, how would you sterilize it? Very good. <laughs> One is ethylene oxide gas. What is another option?
ionizing radiations, X-rays, gamma rays, zap them with X-rays or gamma rays. Those are the only two options that you have. Okay. What if I give you just this liquid broth and ask you to please, this heat lamp, ask you to sterilize it? What are your options? Just the broth. I want the sterile. That's it. Okay, this one here, ethylene oxide, okay, ethylene oxide gas, what else? Sensitive. Sensitive to heat. Zero point zero one micrometer filter. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. What else? One more. Tendalization. Tendalization. Fractional sterilization. John Tendal. Remember? John Tendal. Tendalization. Fractional sterilization. <clears throat> All those methods can be used to sterilize the broth. broth. Okay. That is. Oh, heat. Remember, in in um, tendalization, you do not go beyond 100 degrees. And heat labile is anything that cannot be heated over 100 degrees. Uh-uh. Actually, the spaceship that they sent up, in this, they clean that inside, sterilize it by doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very safe. <clears throat> so that is the end of chapter number seven. Now we start chapter number eight. Everyone received the first half of chapter eight. Okay. Chapter 8. The only memorization part in this chapter are the, f the few terminologies that we are going to talk about here. <clears throat> Genetics, study of DNA, study of inheritance, study of nucleic acids. Genome, human project. Heard of that? Right? Yes. All right. Okay. What is the, t pardon me? Go ahead. Sequel. Yep. Yep. Very good. It's done. It's complete. Yeah. How many genes do humans have? They have sequenced so far. Yep. On 23 pairs of chromosome, humans. How many? Are? They thought there could be hundreds and thousands. So far, 30,000 only. 30,000 sequence. Yep. But bacteria, their total genome is made up of one chromosome. Total genetic makeup of bacteria. Total genome, one chromosome. Chromosome, <clears throat> structure that holds the DNA of the uh, organism or another way, a ninth scientific way of explaining a bracelet, a necklace made up of pearls. What would you call this? This is the pearl. Okay. This is a chromosome of E. coli. E. coli. It has one bracelet. How many pearls are in that necklace? 1,000. 1,000. 
each gene, each pearl is a gene. So a string of genes is called chromosome. String of genes, a set of genes is chromosome. <coughs> Gene, fundamental unit of chromosome. What is gene made up of? Okay, DNA. What is DNA made up of? Chromosome. <laughs> DNA. Okay, let me start by saying this. Okay. Proteins are made up of what? Amino acids. Excellent. Fats are made up of what? Fatty acids, Fatty acids and glycerol. Polysaccharides are made up of monosaccharide. The fourth organic compound, which is nucleic acid, is made up of what? The building block of nucleic acid is? Nucleotide. This is the term you need to remember. Nucleotide. And uh, I'm not sure if you will get to that point or not, but here's your five point bonus question for the next test. You can you have to submit it by next Thursday to me. Okay? <laughs> what yeah, the question is let me write it down. <laughs> And those of you who understand protein synthesis should be able to answer it today. If not, just, just wait until I finish protein synthesis. The question is, how many how nucleotides are required needed for the synthesis of a protein that contains let's make up a number what's your favorite number it has to be three three digit number One oh one amino acids. It's like one time my students to please guesstimate my weight for one point. <laughs> one of them I just failed. I couldn't pass the person. Three hundred fifty pounds. Okay. <laughs> no, no. I have. And one of them says 5'8". I said, well, great. Yeah. 5'8", instead of my <laughs> weight. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> all right, so let me come back here. How many nucleotides are required or needed for the synthesis of a protein that has 101 amino acids? Okay. Must tell you there are more than one correct answer. It depends how you rationalize it. You can give it to me individually as a pair, as a group. It's due next. Okay, email it to me, please. Don't send me the number. Send me your explanation. No, no credit if you just give me the number. Okay. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you can only submit only one time. 
Okay? So think before you submit it. You can be part of different groups. So I <laughs> okay. A sequence of three bases. What bases? Nitrogen bases. Nitrogen bases. There are four bases. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. Four bases. And three of them, they always make up a genetic code. Okay? A genetic code always has three letters in it. Why? Why not two letters? A genetic code is made up of three letters. Three letters. Number two, number one, number four. Why not? That's the code for the amino acid. Very good, yes. But let's take care of that first, OK. Um, let's just finish this, and then I'll explain. Codon, same three-letter words. Okay. When they go to mRNA, terminology is different. It's called codon. In DNA, three-letter word is codon. Genotype and genome, same thing. Genotype and genome. OK. Phenotype. All have 23 pairs of chromosome, but everyone expresses them differently, right? OK. Different height, different weight, different color hair, different color skin. That is phenotype. Now let's talk about why, why genetic code has three letters in it. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, one strand, opposite strand, A always pair up with T, T with A, G with C, C with G, A, T, a, and so on. Each, this is our DNA, and each three letter word in DNA is genetic code. One genetic code equals what? One amino acid. One genetic code equals one amino acid. And how many amino acids exist in nature? 20. 20 amino acids exist in nature. That's good. 20 amino acids exist in nature. So we need how many codons or genetic codes? 20 to make 20 amino acid. 20 We need at least 20 genetic codes. 20 amino acids. Make sense? Right? OK. <clears throat> and how many building blocks are there? How many nitrogen bases are there? Four. A. T, G, and C. The first question was why a genetic code cannot have only one letter? Okay. If let's say A makes one amino acid, T makes another, G makes another, and C makes another. Total number of amino acids we can make, four. How many are we missing? Sixteen, short of sixteen. If each gen genetic code, if genetic code has only one letter in it, then we can only make four. We are missing 16. Now, if genetic code has two letters, how many maximum can we make? Let's see. A, T, G, C, 
4 times 4? 16. A, T, G, C. If you fill this up, A, 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 T, A, G, A, C, and then T, and so on. You'll get 16. How many are we missing? Four. Remember our original question, why must we have three letters in each genetic code? Why? Because a letter, if we have, if genetic code is made up of one letter, maximum you can make four. If a genetic code has two letters, how many maximum you can make? Sixteen. What's the third possibility? Three letters. Let me show you what happens when your genetic code is made up of three letters. <coughs> and this is in your textbook, this chart which you need to memorize. Page number. Yeah. No. Two hundred and fifteen. Two fifteen. Two fifteen. Can you memorize it? I'm good. Huh? You have to memorize that? Only special people. <laughs> <coughs> you need to know how to use it. I will tell you how to use it. Okay. But, and I'll give you a copy of this on the day of the handout. So as long as you know how to use it, you're in good shape. <coughs> so let me show you what happens when you have three letters in each code. And how many do we need? How many do we need? 20 to make 20 amino acids. Now by having three letters in each genetic code, we get how many? 64. 64. Way more than what we need. We need 20. But when we have three letters, 64. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Why? What is the advantage of that? That's very good. Excellent. Okay. Let me <coughs> explain what you just said. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Look at phenylalanine, PHE. My body needs to make skin, and for that skin, you need U U U. U U U. Okay. <coughs> but something goes wrong during the transcription process, and U U U is replaced with U U C. Would my skin be any different? No. That's called neutral mutation. Neutral. Because the, both of these codons, they both make the same amino acid right here. Look at leucine, how many? Six. Six of these. So by having more than 20 codons, okay, it's a good thing for the cell. It's a backup system. Backup system. If one is wrong, one is bad, the other one is going to back it up, except for two. If two of these codons are mutated, the cell is in trouble. This one right here, AUG, which codes for methionine, why is it so important? All protein synthesis starts with this. And three of these are called nonsense or stop codons right here. <coughs> UAA, UAG, UGA. Do you need the stop codon to make protein? Yes. Absolutely. If you don't have this, what happens? Cancer, Cancer tumor. OK, your cells go berserk. No, no stop codon. OK, yeah. So first position of the codon, there are four rows. One, U, C, A, and G. All codons, they have what at first position? U, C, A, and G. Second position, 
four columns. <coughs> second, first one is, second position is what? U, second position, C, C A, N, G. Third position, then four, four, four rows. Each row has its own letter. It's U, C, A, G, U, C, A, G, U, C, A, G. Now, if I ask you to please find me uh, A, C, A. Let's just pick any. A, C, A is A, C, second. We have to stay in this box. A, A, first letter, C, second letter, third, A. THR, three unique, right here. How about GUG? Find GUG, please. G, and then U, G, U, G, did I say G, 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 U, G? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, G, U, and G, right here. Valine, right here, Valine. How about UAA? UAA. U, A, A, stop. Okay, we are going to practice this. So now you know why you must have three letters in each codon. Because by having one letter or two letters, not enough combination to make 20 amino acids. A codon cannot have one letter or two letters, not enough combination. The minimum is three letters. But by having three letters, you have more than what you need, which is a good thing. Okay. By the way, the second amino acid that has one, one codon is this one right here, tryptophan, UGG. Both UGG and AUG, they have only one codon each. <coughs> All right. Bacterial chromosome and bacterial DNA. <laughs> Bacteria, they have one single chromosome, which contains about four million base pairs. Base pair. Base pair. A pair up with T, T with G, T with G, did I say? No, 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 no. <laughs> T, A, A, T, G, C. Okay, that's called base pairing. And it's about 1,000 times bigger than the bacterial cell. Look at this right here. This is the chromosome of E. coli. Okay, it has been punctured on purpose. This is the bacteria. This is DNA. It fits into the cell by a process called supercoiling. You just bent, 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 and then that's how it fits into the bacteria. <clears throat> and many bacteria, they have plasmids extra chromosomal pieces. Structure of DNA. Deoxyribose sugar. Okay. What type of sugar is that? The sugar that we drink in our coffee is what type of sugar? Hexose, six carbon sugar. Okay. But the sugar that is found in DNA is pentose, ribose, pentose, that's a pentose sugar. Okay. In DNA it is deoxy without oxygen. If you look at position number two, which I'm going to show you in a minute, at carbon position number two of the sugar, there's no oxygen. That's why it's called deoxyribose sugar. So double circular double stranded helical polymer of nucleotide. So DNA is made up of what? Nucleotide. Many molecules, many molecules of nucleotide. Nucleotide is made up of what? Things. Nucleotide. Okay. Nitrogen base. First, let's start with sugar. 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 And phosphate. Very good. Pentose sugar, deoxyribose, and this is the diagram that tells you the difference between 
ribose sugar. This is ribose sugar, carbon position number one, two, three, four, and five. Look at carbon position two in DNA right here. There's one typo here. They should have placed what here? Hydrogen. Hydrogen there, but no oxygen. But, so there should be a hydrogen there, but no oxygen. That's called deoxyribose sugar there. Okay. <coughs> Phosphate, one of the four nitrogen bases. If I draw my own simplified version of a, of a nucleotide for you, <coughs> Phosphate backbone, always phosphate backbone. Backbone is connected to the sugar. Sugar is connected to one of the nitrogen bases. It could be A. So this is your one nucleotide. These three items together, they make up a nucleotide. Second, phosphate. Sugar, thymine, phosphate, sugar, guanine, phosphate, sugar, cytosine. If this is one strand, the complementary strand, A and T, they always have two bonds, two hydrogen bonds. G and C, they always have three hydrogen bonds. A with T, T is connected with sugar, and then phosphate. T with A, sugar, phosphate. C, sugar, phosphate. G, sugar, phosphate. <clears throat> That's your molecule of DNA. Polymer of nucleotide, many of millions of molecules of nucleotide, nucleotide, nucleotide. Okay. Now, two of these nitrogen bases are called purines, adenine, A, and G. These are called purines because they have double ring. I'll tell you the significance of single ring in a minute, okay? But these purines are double ring, adenine and guanine. And cytosine and thymine, they have single ring, single ring structure. Okay. Why? What's the significance of single ring and double ring? Okay. If you look at this diagram, which is in your textbook, okay. Look, this is your phosphate backbone that I have right here. See, phosphate right here. This is the sugar, purple right here, purple, sugar. And these are your nitrogen bases right there, okay. <clears throat> Now, if you look at the, the length of this pink bar, length of pink bar, short or long? Short. Length of the dark hot pink, long. Long bars, they represent double ring structure, and short bars, they represent single ring structure. You must have, on one strand, you must have a pyrimidine single ring. On the other strand, you must have a double ring in order to construct a perfect molecule of DNA. You cannot have two small, two single ring, can you? No. Or two double ring. Let's, for example, let's say this is double ring, this is single ring right here. It will fit perfectly. What if I have two small single rings? Would they fit? No. Or two double rings? They will not fit. So in order to make a perfect molecule, you need double ring and a single ring. Okay. In other words, if one, molecule, one strand has purine, the other one will have pyrimidine. Pyrimidine, purine, pyrimidine, okay? One more thing please notice here. One strand right here, this strand on the left, if you look at the carbon position, what carbon position number is on the top? Five, right there on the top. What is the other one right here? Number three. 
So the two strands of DNA, they run in opposite direction. Because if a person is standing right next to you, can you shake hand with that person? No. The person must be standing in front of you to make a perfect fit, perfect molecule of DNA. One strand goes from five carbon to three carbon, and then the other one goes from three carbon to five carbon, or they will not fit. Okay. So here we are. What is this whole thing? Was this whole thing three things together? Nucleotide, a nucleotide, phosphate, sugar, and a base. Base could be, base is always the same, true or false? False. false. You see, I can erase everything. I can erase these right here, but I cannot erase this. This is what makes the DNA unique. Nitrogen base is the one that makes the molecule of DNA unique. You can erase the sugar and phosphate. Okay, no problem. It is understood. Most of the time when you draw DNA, you don't draw sugar and phosphate. It is understood that it's there. Okay? And because this is the unique feature, nitrogen base. <coughs> Single ring and double ring purines. Same thing. Two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds. T always pair up with A, A with T. This is called complementary base pairing, which is universal. Doesn't matter where you take the DNA, from your cheek cell, from rhinoceros, from a bacteria, or from a virus. No, let me take it back, sorry. Exclude viruses, because viruses, they are unique. They are unique. There are very few viruses that are double-stranded. Uh, most of them are single. In living cells, living cells, this is complementary base pairing is universal in living cells. Two such strands are antiparallel, meaning one goes from five to three, the other one goes from three to five. Okay. RNA, the second nucleic acid, okay. always single-stranded. Ribose sugar, it has oxygen at carbon position number two. This is one of the common mistakes on the, on the exam that students will make, right here. DNA does not have, DNA has thiamine, but RNA has uracil. They do not have thiamine. Purines are fine, adenine and guanine, but pyrimidines are different, uracil. Okay. And we are going to practice <clears throat> how many types of RNAs exist? Three. It says four here. I'll tell you the fourth one if I feel like, but okay. <laughs> but there are three. Messenger RNA, what does that do? Transcription is what? Transcribing or copying the genetic code. In layman words, please. Okay. <laughs> Why do we call it messenger? It takes the message of what? It takes the message for a protein from DNA to ribosome. Very good. Okay. It's called messenger because it's carrying a message. Message for what? For a protein, specific protein. From DNA to the factory. Do this. The boss says you have to do this. Who is the boss? DNA. So it takes a message from the boss, from the DNA, to the factory, to the ribosome. That is a messenger RNA. Okay. <clears throat> Second, ribosomal RNA. What does that do? Very good. Makes ribosome, constructs ribosome. Ribosomes are made up of ribosomal RNA and protein. So it constructs the ribosome. 
Third, tRNA, transfer RNA. Sometimes I call it truck RNA, truck, because it carries something, the construction material to the construction factory ribosome. And what is the construction material? Amino acids. So the tRNAs, they carry two things. <clears throat> tRNA looks like a T. That's why they're called tRNA. T. They have a head. That head is actually amino acid. Amino acid. And a mini skirt. And that mini skirt is actually anticodon. Uh, let's just put CCC. CCC. It's always triplet. This is anticodon. So tRNAs, they carry two things with them, amino acid and anticodon. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Any questions on RNA and DNA? This is just a diagram from uh, web. Bad diagram must tell you. Wrong diagram. I'm going to fix it, put a new one in. What's wrong with this diagram? I was going to show you mRNA, which is right here. Yeah, DNA. That's the DNA. Here's the DNA, and then you have this process. DNA makes RNA is called transcription. But that's not the problem. What is the problem with this diagram? Big problem. Um, that's one problem. That's another problem. You didn't, did not notice that. Sure. Another problem. You always transcribe or make RNA from sense strand. And what are they making from? Antisense. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a typo. You make DNA, okay, you make, sorry, you make RNA sense strand, the opposite called the antisense, okay? All right. Here's your tRNA, amino acid on the top, anticodon on the bottom, which binds with what? Codon of mRNA. We'll talk about that in protein synthesis. Here's what? Chewing gum. No. <laughs> That's ribosomal RNA, actually. Blue part is ribosomal RNA, red part is protein. All right. Quickly, the differences between the two. RNA single-stranded has ribose nucleic acid sugar or ribose sugar. DNA double-stranded, deoxyribose sugar. Nitrogen bases, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. No thymine here. Instead of thymine, it has uracil. The rest are the same, adenine, guanine, cytosine. So those, that is the difference between RNA and DNA. <clears throat> now let's do DNA replication. Before we do DNA replication, let me show you, let's look at this diagram first before I bombard you with words. <clears throat> In which phase of the growth curve this replication of DNA takes place? Lag or log? Mommy duplicates everything in lag phase when she's getting bigger. So lag phase is the where this DNA will be duplicated. Okay? All right. Now DNA synthesis always starts, always go in one direction. Okay? Always go from 5 carbon 
to 3 carbon. But remember, I just told you there are two strands. One goes from 5, the other one goes from 3 to 5, right? So it's kind of a little tricky. On one strand, which is 5 to 3, this is called the leading strand right here, leading strand. And the DNA synthesis is continuous, OK? DNA polymerase is one of the enzymes. There are at least 12. DNA polymerase is one of the enzymes that adds new nucleotides to the old strand. This is the parent strand, old strand right here. And this enzyme, which you see this blue block, ice block-like structure, is actually adding new nucleotides to the old one. Now, how about this, this strand right here? This is kind of a little weird, because this is going from 3 to 5. Okay. On this strand, this is called lagging strand. Lagging strand. On lagging strand, DNA synthesis takes place in small fragments. Why? Because RNA polymerase, the enzyme, okay, starts small portion of the uh, replicate small portion of the DNA, hops in the front, makes another piece of the uh, DNA, and these Fragments are called Okazaki fragments. And then if you remember the enzyme from chapter 5, DNA ligase, eventually puts them together a strand of DNA. So if you remember a couple of things, that replication of DNA takes place simultaneously. Replication of DNA takes place on both strands simultaneously, but on one strand, it is continuous from 5 to 3. Other strand, it is discontinually in small fragments called lucky fragments. Let's look at the notes. Let's see if it makes sense. <clears throat> DNA molecule uncoils. <clears throat> the enzyme that uncoils the DNA molecule is called helicase. Helicase. Helicase uncoils it. Okay. Then what? Then the hydrogen bonds between the two strands, they break. And what's the name of the enzyme that does that? I forgot too. This just slipped on me. Okay, no, wait. No. Oh man. It will come. It will come. Okay. All right, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> oh no. Okay. <clears throat> DNA is copied by DNA polymerase. Enzyme, this enzyme is the one that adds new nucleotides to the old strand. Oh, that's bad. <clears throat> Direction of replication is always from 5 to 3 prime. <clears throat> it is started by uh, the fourth type of R I wanted to mention is called ribozyme, actually. I don't know if you have them in your notes or no. You do. Okay. Ribozyme. Ribozymes, they're unique RNA, types of RNA. They are types of nucleic acid. Plus, they can behave like enzymes. Ribozymes is the fourth type of RNA, which behaves like enzyme, and they are pieces of RNA. One of the function of this type of ribozyme, one of the example of ribozyme is RNA primer. One of the examples of ribozyme is RNA primer, which starts DNA replication, which starts DNA replication. <clears throat> Leading strand is made continuously, and lagging strand is made 
in small fragments, Okazaki fragments. And then the fragments are connected by ligase. Replication takes place on both strands at the same time. What does this mean? DNA replication is semi-conservative. Synthesized molecule of DNA. Look at this right here. Each newly synthesized molecule of DNA. <clears throat> here are the two parent strands right here. When they separate, at, at the end, when you have two brand new molecules of DNA, what percentage of this molecule is new? 50% is new daughter and 50% is old. So each newly synthesized molecule keeps 50% of the old and has 50% of the new. That's called semi-conservative. It saves half of the old DNA. Okay. Uh, you see, the enzyme DNA polymerase, this is what the DNA polymerase does. It takes new nucleotides and add it to the old strand. <coughs> All righty. Now we talk, move on to protein synthesis, sorry. We have actually already talked about this, the, the introduction part of protein synthesis. There are 64 possible codons that make how many proteins? 20 amino acids. 61 of them are called sense. Three are called nonsense. Okay. Code is redundant, repeats itself, except for these two. Underline them, highlight them, please. Okay. Tryptophan and methionine, they both have only one. And the genetic code that always starts protein synthesis is AUG, AUG. And what stops them? One of the three. These are called nonsense or stop codons. <coughs> Pardon me? Yeah, this is the one, okay, uh, that starts methionine. Both methionine and tryptophan, they have only one, one each, one each. <coughs> process of protein synthesis is same in all living cells, true or false. It involves these two major steps basically, that's what I'm asking. The process of protein synthesis in all living cells is completed in, in two steps. Well, first is called transcription, the other one is called translation. True? True. Location is different because eukaryotes, they have a nucleus. So their transcription takes place in the nucleus and translation in the cytoplasm. Prokaryotes do not have nucleus. So both transcription and translation takes place in the cytoplasm. Transcription, what is it? Take the message, turning off or conversion of genetic codes into what? codons, a process in which genetic codes are converted into codons. They are, it is called transcription. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay. This is, okay. If I ask you to please transcribe this DNA, go ahead, do it. <clears throat> Transcribe this DNA. There you go. The very first thing you want to find out, which strand? Red one or blue one? You have to determine the sense strand, which one you are using to make the protein. 
Now if I, I tell you that the red strand is your sense strand right here. This is your sense strand and this is your anti-sense. And they can be swapped. What if bacteria needs this, en this enzyme in a few hours? So this one will become sense and this one will become anti-sense. Because they both are genes. It depends which gene is used. So let's transcribe it one, before we transcribe it. For replication, which enzyme did we use to connect these new nucleotides to the DNA? A with T, DNA polymerase. But in, when you make RNA, you, make, you use RNA polymerase. The enzyme that glues the new nucleotides to the DNA <clears throat> is called RNA polymerase. T goes with what? A. A goes with? U. U. This is the most crucial thing right there. And C with? G and G with? C. This, this is transcription from here to here, right here. Okay. Or, remember, these are this three letter word is what? Genetic code. But when you change the genetic code into mRNA, this is not genetic code anymore. It is a codon. 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 Okay. <coughs> So transcription, a process in which DNA makes RNA, or a process in which genetic codes are converted into codons. Okay. So, and second process in which this messenger, message in the form of codon is converted into proteins at the ribosome is called translation. So transcription. What, what, how much time do I have? Five minutes. Five minutes. Plenty. <laughs> yeah. Synthesis of RNA, <clears throat> mRNA, or any types of RNA. Okay. This is just the, what we just talked about. So what do you need for, to make RNA? You need supplies of RNA nucleotide. Name them for me, please, quickly. Adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine adenine, uracils, guanine, and cytosine, and the enzyme RNA polymerase. One strand, which is called the sense strand, is used to make RNA. How about in DNA replication? Which strand do you use? One or both? Both. In DNA replication, both strands are replicated. Okay. This one I'm going to explain next time. So I will actually, yeah, I'm just going to read it, not going to stop, read it, but I will explain, draw and explain this next time. The enzyme RNA polymerase binds to the promoter site. What is the promoter site? And starts a protein synthesis. And when this enzyme reaches at the terminator site, the process stops. So region of the DNA that signals the end is called terminator site. So next time I'm going to draw a strand of DNA and we are going to pick up right from transcription and then finish up, try to finish this chapter. Good day. <coughs>